Marlon Riggs was a distinguished filmmaker, educator, and poet of African descent who produced award-winning documentaries, published various journal articles, and taught at the University of California at Berkeley. Marlon Riggs's last film, Black Is, Black Ain't, made in 1996, was finished by his colleagues after his death in 1994. Nevertheless, this film is a product of his very last efforts, which he exerted until he could no longer work, even from his hospital bed. Black Is, Black Ain't works to deconstruct the portrayals of people of African descent that have historically been prescribed by Eurocentric institutions. As blackness is reappropriated to signify unification through a common ancestry and history, the film encourages destroying dominant boundaries that restrict blackness as a simplistic binary opposition of is or ain't. Instead, the film exposes identity as nothing more than a Eurocentric construct, diverting people away from a more important Afrocentric standpoint within blackness. Remember, we have an identity crisis, brother. At one time, you call a brother an African, he want to get mad with you. You call a brother black, he want to fight you. Now we're coming to the focal point that we're black and we're African. And we're from African descent. We are black people. And so now we're starting to adopt the true identity of who we really are. Black, deeply stained with dirt. Soiled, dirty, foul. Having dark or deadly purposes, malignant. Black. Pertaining, pertaining to, to or involving, involving death, death, deadly, deadly baneful, baneful, disastrous, sinister. The film starts off by challenging constructed meanings of blackness in Eurocentric popular culture by using specific examples of definitions and associations as well as children's rhymes. And remember the children's rhymes? The film then introduces the binary oppositions that are suggested through the title and which define blackness in Eurocentric popular culture. However, through the images and voiceover Riggs uses, the film is constantly manipulating, mixing, and blurring these notions of blackness. The audio of a participatory audience running parallel with the African tradition of speech works to highlight Afrocentrism and its importance. Black will get you, and black is light, and black will leave you alone. Black can get you over, and black can set you down. Black can let you move forward, and black will make you stumble around. It's so hot, and black is so low. Black can say yes, and black, black can be your best friend. Be cozy as the night. Black can do you in. Make you fuss and cuss and fight. Black is black. And black is blue. Black is bright. Black is you. The film also works to pinpoint the origins of defining blackness with a fixed and unwavering meaning. Riggs does this through referring to historical scientism, in which numbers and fractions were used to biologically categorize based on race. Riggs juxtaposes the images of scientism with close-up shots of various people of African descent, suggesting that blackness comes in various forms and cannot be simplified to numerical values. Black is, black ain't suggests that femininity and queerness are impossible to exclude from the discourse. The film deconstructs the ways in which the institution of slavery, the criminal justice system, the entertainment industrial complex, among other institutions, have historically masculinized women of African descent and feminized men of African descent. While black women were seen as strong, and often because of this, unwomanly, our men were considered weak. Is there any wonder then that when black men finally achieved public voice, the top priority was restoring what society had repeatedly stolen from us? The 
black man must rise. The time has come for the black man the to black stand man up. The black man must organize. The, the, black man the world's black course black will change the day the African heritage people come together as brothers. brothers. One thing we must the black man in America has no knowledge black of his true two. identity. 850,000 black men saw Black man will define black power. Black man in America The only thing that's going to free you is gunpowder. Black man will define black power. Time has come for the black man to stand up and take his place. It's time, brother. The superimposition of the drumming, an essential and sacred part of African culture, over snippets from the black liberation movement, all while the drummers are exposed as women, works to centralize Afrocentrism and women of African descent as crucial to the discourse on blackness. The film continues on to connect the ways in which these same institutions and portrayals gave rise to the compulsory heteronormativity that exists within a Eurocentric notion of blackness. That um, somehow my blackness is diminished because I love a, a man. It's purely out of that sense that black men have been chatteled, black men have been lynched, black men have been shot, beaten, brutalized by the police, the government every which way, etc. So that some people view black homosexuality as the final break in masculinity. The and film then works as a call see, to redefine masculinity and femininity as intertwined, human and to understand that the separation between the two merely originated from the effects of institutions and the portrayals they created. It's not so much for me manhood that we're trying to reach, that we're emulating. It's rather human in all the complexities of being human, which includes being feminine. That when men can be feminine as well as manly, whatever those terms mean to you, but when you can be both, comfortably, then you've achieved what it is I think it is to be a man, which is to be human. Finally, the reoccurring comparison of people of African descent with gumbo works to bring the entire film together. The significance of this comparison has to do with gumbo as a southern food, not only commonly associated with black culture, but having West African, French, Spanish, and Native American origins. Thus, gumbo is a product of not one, but various cultures and backgrounds, similar to people of African descent as a result of many factors, including the African diaspora. Subtly but surely, the film reaffirms Afrocentrism as a feasible commonality. If a people is like gumbo, then you might ask, what is the root? That special element that binds and gives everything its distinct flavor. Well, you take some color, a dash or a big dollop, it don't matter. And you blend it with an assortment of physical features that reflect every face you might possibly encounter on this great earth. Mix that up with a culture that just loves to improvise, signify, reclaim, renew, and read. And you've got it, the recipe for black folk. When you see the scenes of me naked running through the woods, which I will hope you will use an abundance of, those things had a powerful image for me in terms of searching through clutter in my life, searching through the clutter of the project, uh, searching through the uh, attempts by society at large to cover you and to confine you into some space in which you're not seen for the naked truth of who you are. Those scenes are critical in their metaphoric importance. I mean, it's easy for me to make the parallels of being confined and lost in woods in a community confined by its own limited notions of identity. You see, that's not a great leap for me. And I can say that, or write it actually as text. Because I don't know if I want to re record more narration. <laughs>